What would you do if you found out that popular websites you frequent were silently stealing your data? And on top of that, without even the owners of those popular websites even knowing it. Well, this just happened with hundreds of thousands of websites across the globe, including big names like Intuit, Square, the US government, and more. Stay tuned to find out how a sneaky supply chain attack on the JavaScript polyfill.io service compromised these sites and what you can do to protect your own. In order to set the stage and understand this attack, we first need to go back in time a bit. Now, some of you may recall many years ago, there were some web browsers that were slow to adopt modern features. I'm looking at you, Internet Explorer. And as a result, a technique called polyfill was used to help in enabling developers to leverage modern web features, even in browsers that don't support them. How exactly does a polyfill work? Well, it looks at specific HTTP headers found in the request to determine the environment it's coming from and how to best fill in the functionality for features needed by the website being accessed. As an example, let's say a user is accessing the site from a browser that doesn't support array, prototype includes, or promise. The polyfill will dynamically adjust the scripts returned as part of the website to fill in the functionality for a promise or array prototype includes. A popular library for polyfilling is called polyfill-library. And one of the common ways a website will leverage the library is via the polyfill service project, which is hosted on a content delivery network or CDN. A CDN will host the polyfill contents and supply them to any websites referencing them. This brings us to a more recent time. In February, 2024, a popular service called cdn.polyfill.io, which hosted the scripts for the polyfill library, was purchased by a Chinese-based company called Fun Null or Funnel. In response to this purchase, one of the creators behind the polyfill service project, Andrew Betts, warned users that they shouldn't blindly rely on and trust third-party providers. Andrew further explained that they had no connection with the polyfill.io domain, which was operating as a CDN for the creator's service library. In addition to this warning from Andrew, other folks in the community raised concerns via GitHub issues that have since been deleted by Funnel, but we can see the contents of them via the internet archive, which thankfully preserved it. Now, fast forward a bit to June 21st, 2024, Google was reported to have rolled out a compromised website error message on the Google Ads application website, which escalated due to reports of a googieanalytics.com domain spoofing attempt. So essentially, instead of Google Analytics, it was googie that replaced the L's with I's, okay? This also resulted in many Google Ads accounts being automatically suspended. Jumping to June 25th, 2024, and those warnings and concerns back in February are now justified. Security firm Sansec published findings that malicious code was being injected as part of the polyfill.io service, which would redirect users to malicious sites and scams. The way this attack works is it exploits the dynamic nature of a polyfill and injects the malicious code into the expected JavaScript assets that load into the websites that are depending upon it. Since this report from Sansec, a lot has happened in response. The owners of the polyfill.io service have attempted to save their reputation by denying the allegations and claiming that they're being maliciously defamed. However, this company hasn't done things that really instill trust in them. At one point, they've changed their DNS records back to Cloudflare-based servers, which could easily be switched later on. And they even tried to include a banner on their website that would indicate Cloudflare security protection, which Cloudflare never approved of or was even reached out to about. But unfortunately for this company, as much as they tried to save their reputation, their domain name provider, Namecheap, has promptly taken down the site to prevent any further damage to affected websites. So if you go to polyfill.io, you'll see a message that the site cannot be reached anymore. Unfortunately, this actually seems to go even further than just the polyfill.io domain. As the Malware Hunter team points out on Twitter, there are several other domains associated with this attack, which Sansec reported, but are being overlooked now. This was expanded upon thanks to one of the hastily made tweets by the Polyfill account indicating they will create their own global CDN product that's gonna surpass somehow Cloudflare. Pretty ambitious take. As a result, folks on Twitter investigated this new site, polyfill.com instead of the .io domain, and noticed it was a direct ripoff of JS Deliver, which is another popular CDN for open source projects. Then another Twitter user, ZZWUDev, discovered the repository for the site included API keys used for Cloudflare. With which, Twitter user MDMCK10 tested those API keys and found them to still be valid. This enabled them to see the other active domains associated with the account and was further reported by the malware hacker team Twitter account. The polyfill.io owners are still trying to save face at this time and have set up under yet another new domain to presumably continue their supply chain attack. And this new domain also seems to still be trying to rip off the JS Deliver site just like before. Okay, so now that we're all caught up on these latest events, let's talk about what you should do. 
A lot of the knee-jerk reactions from the community in response to this incident is that polyfills shouldn't even be needed anymore, and so just don't use them in your projects. Well, duh. And to some degree, this is true, but there are definitely situations where old browsers are still being used for some reason or another. That is just the unfortunate reality. So first, see if you're referencing any of these compromised domains in your sites. And not just the polyfill.io one, remember, but these other ones as well. If you find that you are referencing these sites, promptly remove them either completely or replace them with a more trustworthy provider. For the Polyfill site, you can use either Cloudflare or Fastly, which are the best options at this time. You could also consider self-hosting these scripts and assets. That way you have greater control over your environment and what you're depending upon. If you wanna take things even further to safeguard against these types of threats, here are a few more security best practices. Implement sub-resource integrity or SRI so you can ensure the integrity of CDN delivered content. Use a content security policy or CSP, which restricts the sources from which scripts can be loaded. Keep your libraries updated to make sure you have all the latest changes and security patches. And lastly, audit your dependencies regularly and automatically by using security tools like Sneak for continuous security monitoring. So at the end of all this, what is the moral of the story? Well, I'd say it's exactly what Andrew Betts said from the start. Don't blindly trust and rely on third-party sources for your applications. Be more cautious when considering doing so. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.